Hey guys, so first I have to give credit for this picture to the Raspberry Pi, Pi Foundation. I actually went on Wikipedia and read about fair use, but uh, I thought it was incredibly appropriate. I already wanted to call this Get Cooking with Nerves, and I saw that picture, and I'm like, yeah, okay, it works great. So I'm curious to know how many of you guys have, and gals have uh, ever actually burned firmware for Nerves? Wow, that's a huge number. Um, okay, so the next question is how many have done things that, that went significantly on, beyond blinking an LED or two? Okay, good. This talk is perfect then. So I did a training yesterday on nerves, and what I learned from that, and what I think I'm learning from the reaction I've got, and just for the, for the camera, only a few of you raised your hands on the, the second question. Um, a lot of people have messed around with nerves enough to maybe get LEDs blinking on a, on, excuse me, on a Raspberry Pi, but they haven't taken it much further than that. And I had a presentation that I had all planned to give today, but after yesterday's training, I decided I'm gonna follow in uh, my colleague Dave's footsteps here and do some live coding instead. And the reason, <laughs> yeah, I'm a little nervous about it, so go easy on me. Um, my impression is a lot of people have been exposed to nerves, and a lot of people have taken the first step of trying to blink an LED or two, but they kind of stop there because they don't really know where to go with it beyond that. And so I'm, I'm hoping to use this time to take a project from brand new, scratch, to something that is on the network, discoverable, uh, and does some interesting things, um, all in the course of the talk. And that's gonna be instead of the slides I was gonna present, which I think maybe I'll save for Elixir days, or Elixir Conf, or something. Um, so how many people don't know what NERVS is at all? Okay, a few, so it's worth going through a tiny bit. So, so NERVS is basically a system for merging your Elixir app in with a very tiny embedded Linux and producing firmware that is robust and uh, uh, production capable, meaning you could actually build real world shipping products based on it. Um, and uh, delivering that firmware bundle to a device. And what makes it much more interesting than some of the other platforms out there uh, for building embedded systems is first of all, it's, it's uh, centered around Elixir, uh, but secondly, it's, uh, it's centered around something called BuildRoot, which is a really, um, serious production tool, tool chain for building embedded Linuxes. And it's used in a lot of embedded products. Um, so I, will, I was gonna skip these slides if nobody raised their hands, but I'll go through real quickly. So this slide I presented at a couple other conferences, which is, you know, embedded systems of today are the supercomputers of yesterday. And it really isn't hard to understand that when, um, when Joe and company built Erlang back in the 80s, uh, they were dealing with systems that uh, are put to shame by the, uh, the small embedded systems of today. And that trend doesn't seem to appear to be changing at all. So NERVS is basically above what, what people generally use in these small uh, microcontroller-based systems for like watches and RTOSs for cameras but it's below the really complicated Android or iOS type um, embedded systems that you, uh, that you may see. And it, it's trying to fit in a space where it's basically a minimalist embedded Linux. And so other things that use these kinds of minimalist embedded Linux platforms are things like wireless routers. Wireless routers often run a uh, distribution based on build root, just like NERVS. Um, this gives you an idea of how NERVS fits into the ecosystem, when you get a, if you get a Raspberry Pi, a bunch of you probably ever had a Raspberry Pi or a Beagle on Black. The operating system that comes with that is usually Debian uh, or Debian based like Raspbian. And um, if you look at, uh, if, it, Nerves is basically tries to be much, much leaner than those. It's, it takes an opt in approach as opposed to an opt out approach. And you can strip Raspbian down to make it faster and smaller, but it's a lot of work and it comes with a huge overhead, like user management and package management and often graphical display. And those things don't make sense for most embedded projects. For most embedded projects, you want something that is locked down and works uh, smoothly. Um, and there's one, there's one uh, very important thing that, uh, that, that NERVS does, which is it, it, 
it embraces the notion of a read-only uh, root partition. And that means, unlike De Debian, all of your writing, all of your logs, all of your data goes to somewhere other than where your program is stored. And that's by design, and it's enforced by design. And that gives you certain benefits, like the ability to um, be much more stable if somebody yanks the power cord in the middle, or configurability, because you can always get back to a known state just by resetting the, the, the variable storage back. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna go into that. This is from a prior talk, so some, most of you have seen this. Uh, I would actually um, go, well, I'll leave that last slide up for a second. I would actually go, uh, if you're interested in introduction to NERVs, uh, there are a bunch of talks from both this, this year, last year, and also Elixir Conf. Uh, a number of speakers, including Justin Schneck and Frank Hunleth and myself have given talks on NERVs, and they're all available on the NERVs uh, project website. Um, I'm leaving this slide up because one of the things that sold me on NERVs from the beginning is we built production systems on it. So our company ships a product, uh, a couple products actually, that are built using NERVs. And we were shocked that when we ran, uh, ran NERVs for weeks on end, it didn't seem to consume resources beyond what it did in the first hour or two. And uh, so this kind of, this kind of stability was completely unheard of from any other system I've worked with. And uh, I was incredibly impressed by it. And I think that the, the credit both goes to the Beam uh, virtual machine and to the, the good work that Frank's done in, in getting the Beam installed on top of BuildRoot and the, the BuildRoot guys have done an amazing job too. And, and my experience has stayed this way. It's not been like there, there have been almost no bugs. If I can, I actually can say I cannot think of a single bug in any of our production products that has been caused by the, uh, the virtual machine, or Elixir, or, um, uh, or the NERVS uh, core, the, the Earl init library that uh, loads NERVS. All those things have been rock solid for us. Almost all of our bugs have been bad hardware design and um, poor coding on the part of uh, those of us who are writing the software. Um, just really briefly, this is one of the common prototyping platforms. You guys may have seen this. A it's a really nice platform to prototype production products on because it's an open source hardware platform. Um, you can build, prototype something on this and then you can uh, do your own board layout and buy the components in small quantities and ship it as a production product. And that's what we've been doing with uh, some of our products. Um, the one that you're probably more familiar with is the Raspberry Pi is another uh, nice hobbyist platform, it's not really a good production prototyping platform because you can't buy the parts and turn them into a real product very easily. But you get a lot for your money and there's a huge support network uh, around the Raspberry Pi including lots of cool sensors and daughter boards and things you can plug in and I, I'll talk a little bit about that later if I have time. Uh, one of the daughter boards that some of you might want to see and we used in the training yesterday is this thing called a Grove Pi. Um, and it's, I actually have it on the Raspberry Pi here. Hopefully the camera can see that. Um, but it basically takes the Raspberry Pi and adds a whole bunch of I.O. analog, digital, and um, uh, uh, I2C interfaces. And then they sell all these little tiny sensors that you can just plug in and use them to prototype a project. And uh, I, it, you don't have to do any soldering, which is great. And I, I've, I've done a lot of soldering, and I'm glad to not have to do too much to prototype things. So. Uh, that's, a, that's a fun platform that we're increasingly um, supporting. See, those are our two products. Uh, let's see, that's about it. Any, I'm not gonna ask for questions on NERVS, I'll save those to the end, but I'm actually gonna dive into actually building a NERVS app and just get it going and uh, see where we can go with it in the time we have. So. Okay, so. Um, most of you have built Elixir products with MixNew. Uh, if, uh, if you install NERVs, first of all, installing NERVs, I had a slide on this, but I'm not quite sure why I missed it. Um, installing NERVs is, let me actually find that slide because it would be useful. Oh, it was my very next slide, interesting. Um, so installing NERVs, depending on whether you're on Linux or Mac, is pretty easy. The instructions to do it are on the, uh, the nervesproject.org website. Uh, this URL is the exact 
uh, page for the installation. Um, but, but if you go to nervousproject.org, which is the main website, it's easy to find how to install. Uh, you do want to use Homebrew on a Mac because it gets you everything uh, you need. And on Linux, uh, if you're on Debian or Ubuntu, it's pretty easy. Um, there are instructions for other Linux platforms on uh, the Nerves Project website as well. Uh, the one command that's really a nightmare is this mix archive dot install HTTPS blah 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 blah. Hopefully we'll fix that by making it something like lo mix local dot nerves just like we can with hex and rebar at some point. But as for right now, you have to go do that. And that is, again is on that, uh, the installation page on the Nerves Project website. So I'm gonna go ahead and do, not, I've already installed things, so I'm not gonna go through that. But I'm gonna do mix, uh, run mix, whoops, help. And can you guys all see that? It looks like it's showing up pretty well. Okay, so you'll see that because I've installed that, that nerves archive, I do have mix nerves.new. And so I'm gonna run mix nerves.new. And I'm gonna call my project demo. Uh, and it immediately gives me an error saying you should pick a default target. This error might go away. So a target is the type of machine that we're building um, the, uh, the software for. And what Nerves does is it cross compiles your app into the target architecture and, and uh, platform and bundles firmware for the specific hardware you're going to, to run. So we have to give it a target. Uh, in this case, we're gonna say RPI3 because I have a Raspberry Pi 3 up here. And it indeed created a, uh, a little app and I'm gonna cheat. I'm not gonna do everything live coding because I drive you all crazy. So I'm going to copy, um, uh, yeah. I'm gonna put a little file there that has my hints about what I need to do so I don't mess it up. Uh, that's not what I wanna do. I'm still getting used to Adam. Okay, so this is a pro project structure it created. It looks pretty much like any mix project. Um, there's a couple interesting things about it. Uh, the uh, the um, mix.exs file uh, has some extra stuff in it uh, to load the, new, the NERS de development environment, and it has some aliases it defines to deal with uh, cross compilation. And I'm not going to go into the technical details of all that because it's just boilerplate at this point. Um, what I am going to do is start modifying this, and the very first thing I'm going to do is add a couple dependencies. Uh, I'm going to add um, nerves interim, let's see, get the right file here. Um, I'm going to add nerves interim Wi-Fi, which is a, uh, 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 unfortunately named library, but it, uh, correctly named. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's not yet ready to call beautiful. So it, uh, there are two network stacks for um, the NERVS project right now. We're trying to unify that. I'll talk about that later. Sorry? Yep. Thanks. I appreciate that. Anyone wants to do that, that will save me a lot of embarrassment. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to also, well, let me bring up my sauce. Oh, that's right. This is probably, um, for those of you that know about Elix the changes in Elixir 1.4, I'm doing this so that dependencies automatically get um, uh, started. And then I'm going to make some changes to demo.ex, which is basically just a boilerplate. This is the thing that was created, um, and it doesn't define any worker children at all. It just starts a supervisor, and um, so I'm gonna put some, some workers in there. I'm gonna put in uh, one of them that, uh, that basically starts the, the Linux kernel module that is needed to, um, to do our networking. Ah. And then the other one is gonna call init Wi-Fi network, and that's actually gonna join our Wi-Fi network. Uh, and I'm gonna set a module variable to be the, the name of the interface, the Wi-Fi interface on this board, which is WLAN zero. And I'm also going to uh, add those two functions. Uh, let's see, let's add those here. Whoop, I only got one of them.
thought this would be easier than Vim, but I'm not sure. Okay. So that's, that's all I'm going to do for now to our, um, our main module. And uh, then what I'm going to do is... Um, I'm going to add a config line in config.exs, which defines how we're going to connect to our wireless network. So hopefully that all made sense. It's not too complicated. And the documentation for a lot of this stuff is in the individual dependency modules. And so let me just double check that I actually did everything I needed to do before I do this. Yeah, all looks good. Um, oh, yeah, good point, thanks. I'll do that now. It isn't really required for this step, but I would be confused later if I didn't do it. And I, I won't actually go into this quite yet, what that does, but we'll do that. Okay, so at this point, I think I have a workable app. Everything's saved. So I do mix depth stat get. Let me make sure I'm actually online with something useful. I need to get the Casa Monica Wi-Fi. Um, success. That in theory means I have a network. Let's see if it really does. Yep, look at that. So it's going to download um, all of the NERVS packages it needs to build firmware for this device. Now this would take a long time if I didn't already have them in my cache on my machine from other projects I'd done, because the hotel Wi-Fi isn't as fast as you might want. But luckily I have them all. So now all I have to do is type mix firmware. Uh, wait, is that right? Yeah, I think so. And a whole bunch of stuff happens. And you'll notice it's compiling some C code. And some of that C code, I believe, is um, for uh, oh, it, it got a great error. Okay, so some of that C code is to support the underlying dependencies. Um, so this error actually is one that hopefully will go away, but it's actually a pretty nice error because all I have to do is run that. Um, now that we're using distillery, we need a uh, nerves not uh, nerves dot release or excuse me a uh, a rel config to access file. I'm not going to review it. I'm just going to use the default one because I happen to know it works. And then I'm gonna once again mix firmware. It picks up where it left off and builds me some firmware. And what I'm gonna do is actually put that firmware on a device here. So one of the great things about the MacBook uh, Pro with USB-C is you end up with all these little gizmos to do things that you otherwise had to diff different gizmos to do. This one's really cool. It's the world's smallest SD card burner I've ever seen. Um, so to actually burn an X SD card, it's a lot easier than it was a year ago or two years ago. Um, you just do mix firmware.burn. And because I have this really cool new MacBook, you can see it's once my fingerprint to let me burn to my SD card, which is my favorite use so far of the fingerprint sensor. <laughs> okay, so I have an SD card, it's burned, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my device. Um, you know, there's one in there, let's take that one out. Doesn't work to try to put two in at once. Okay. Now, unlike previous talks, this talk does not involve blinking any LEDs. So the reality is I don't actually know um, from the LEDs whether this worked at all. So give me some good karma here. Um, what I'm going to do is try to access the device on the Internet. Unfortunately, I don't really know where it is. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, but. I'm going to guess because I kind of know where it probably is. I'm going to say it's at 192, and I'm changing, by the way, you'll see I go up here, I'm changing to a wireless router that I have here that this thing joins so it doesn't have to join the hotel network with a password and all that. Um, well, it's not there. Let's see if it ended up at 101. Yep. Okay. So I'm pretty sure that's 101. Uh, I don't really know. Um, it would be nice to know. <laughs> there you go. There's my demo. Okay, we'll take, I'll take the next step. Okay, so the next step is 
Let's see what we can do so we actually can figure out what's going on. Uh, there's, a, there's a great um, module called Logger Multicast Backend. And for those of you that understand um, multicast logging, um, or multicast in general, it lets you find something on a network because the, the device can basically send to a multicast group and any node on the network can subscribe to that multicast group. And so you can figure out where something is just based on its multicast log, log spot. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add this to config EXS. And basically all this does is configure logger to use the logger multicast backend. And then I'm going to also add the dependency um, to my mix file. And, uh, okay. So what I didn't talk about in great detail is there's one other little module I added here called NERVS Firmware HTTP. And so I, I only just to make sure I got everything here. It's hard to talk and do this at the same time. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. Okay, so because I added mixed firmware HTTP the first time I, put, I burned firmware, in theory, I can do um, uh, a command called nerves.push. Oh, I have to get depths, sorry. Oh, this is not gonna be fun. Switch networks. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I don't think there's any reason for me to stay on Wi-Fi after switching networks. But I'm going to switch back. Yeah, okay, so now it got log logger multicast in, back in. Um, hmm. Hmm, that's interesting. I, that's what I get for live coding. Um, you did tell me. <laughs> I grant you that. I know it should have that. Oh. I'm just typing the wrong command. Okay. So now I have this thing called firmware.push. And what firmware.push does uh, is kind of cool. I can say firmware.push 192 or yeah, 192.168.0.10. Was it 101? Is that right? Okay. Um, what did I do? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what? I did that when I practiced it, too. <laughs> there we go. And so now I'm delivering firmware over the Wi-Fi as opposed to burning the card. Um, the other thing that's interesting... Uh, great question. No. NERVS has two separate read-only partitions um, by default, and it will always apply a firmware update to the opposite one and then reboot to it. So um, I got some errors here, which I expected to get, uh, because... Um, why did I expect to get those errors? Oh, because I'm not actually connected to the hotel Wi-Fi. Um, now, interestingly... Let me just see something for a second. Okay, so the device is back up, but I didn't get my logs like I expected. Am I on the right network here? Yeah? Huh. Let me just, for the fun of it, cycle power again and make sure I didn't miss something at the time that it came up. Um, not sure I understood the question. One more time. No. No, multicast addresses are um, in a separate address range from the, the local networking addresses. Well, I am definitely in demo mode. So I don't understand what I did there. I'll look and see really quickly. Um, back end looks good. Let me see my config.exs. Huh, looks good. Well, I'm gonna keep plowing forward and maybe, we'll, maybe I just didn't build something because um, the rest of it all appears to be working. So the next thing I'm gonna do is um, 
uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, add some, some more configuration in. What am I doing on time? Oh, we're getting there. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's not what I want. Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, so what this is doing is it's actually making my mix project config available to a module called Nerve Cell. And uh, that's gonna give us some more data uh, about the, the, the environment, the mix environment available at runtime um, so that we can do something interesting with it. And I'll show you what we're gonna do with it in a minute. So back in my mix EXS file here, I'm gonna add a few more uh, module variables up top. Uh, I'm going to change some things about my project here to incorporate some, a bit more metadata. Um, and specifically, I'm gonna refer to, uh, instead of version the way it was defined, which was just coded as 010, I'm gonna use this date stamped version that I created here so that I actually can build firmware and know when I built it. Um, Oh, did I not? There's the, that's the reason it didn't work then. Okay. Thank you. I only practiced it three times, you know. I didn't need more than that apparently. Um, well, that's all right. We'll jump to the, to the fun part here then. Uh, so I'm also gonna add this to my depths. This is a library that isn't really officially part of NERVS yet, but uh, hopefully will be sometime soon. Um, And then I'm gonna go for the gusto here and add a whole bunch of code. And this is a case where um, I'm gonna try to explain what I'm doing, but it might be partly after it's done. So I'm gonna add one more worker that starts something called a network manager. And I'm gonna add a whole new file uh, called networkmanager.ex. And I'm gonna throw some code in there. And that code is going to basically uh, listen for events from the network stack. And my opinion is this particular functionality that's here should be a standard uh, def that you can just include in your app and we may get there. But basically what this is gonna do is start a bunch of things when it hears that the device gets a network address. And specifically it's gonna start Erlang distribution, which um, kind of give us some fun things to do. So let's see, did I get that? I get that. Make sure I got everything. This is the last piece of coding. Um, yeah, I got that. Oh, can't forget this one. Um, so in vm.args, for various reasons, uh, you have to define a cookie before the VM starts. Otherwise, bad things happen. So I'm gonna give it a cookie if you wanna run distribution. Specifically, if you want our distribution where you dynamically start it and stop it. So that all looks good. Uh, that looks good. Uh, got that, got that, got that. I think I got all that. Um, all right. Well, wish me luck here. So I, I will actually talk briefly through this network manager piece. Um, basically, all we're doing here is starting a gen server, and we're using registry. Uh, and registry is is wonderful for nerves because we've been looking for a general purpose way to um, distribute and handle events between modules. And so this is looking for events that come from uh, the DHCP client. And the DHCP client will find an address and will catch the fact that it found an address and use it to configure our Erlang distribution based on that address. That's what fundamentally is going on here. It's also doing something where it's setting up something called nerve cell, which I'll show in a minute. Okay. So let's try mix firmware this time. Actually, mix steps.get. I still have to be on my other network, don't I? Uh, Casa Monica. There we go. Uh, and then let's go to the, well, actually, I'll, I'll build firmware here too. I did type it this time. We're good. Thank you. I was wondering why that didn't work. It's like, dang, that worked three times. And... Okay. 
So when it says updating base firmware with, with release, it's actually taking a copy of Linux, uh, embedded Linux, uh, in this case a pre-built pre system for the Raspberry Pi 3 and merging your app with it and building a whole file system and image into this firmware bundle. And now I will connect to the, my local Wi-Fi um, and I will, uh, I think it should still be, yeah. That should still work. Let's see. Yep. So I put new firmware on my box. I might even make it on time. Mm -hmm. I believe so. Yeah, let's see what happens when it restarts. I've got my fingers crossed on this one. probably restarting about now. <laughs> hmm. Oh, there it is. Phew. <laughs> Got me a little nervous for a minute. I was just about to say I did something wrong. Um, so you'll notice Wi-Fi Manager is very noisy, which is one of the reasons it's interim. Um, but you can get the entire startup all the way from starting multicast back end all the way through uh, starting the network manager and you can see what's going on on this box. Um, I'm going to do a couple other really quick things here because it's worth pushing the envelope a bit anytime you do a live demo. Um, <coughs> hmm? We're going to try, uh, no, would you say no it's not? <laughs> Yeah, I don't blame you there. Um, was I 101? Is that right? Yeah. Let's try remote shell. I am now shelled into my NURBS box. And if I do ls, I'm actually looking at the file system of the box. Um, and I'm able to poke around and do everything you can do with remote shell, which is kind of cool. Um, and I, I'll, I'll do one more Hail Mary here because I think it's there's nothing quite so satisfying as running Observer on a uh, embedded node. I don't know why it's more, more satisfying than any other node, but it is. So, uh, nodes, connect node. Uh, 101, I think. And if you give it a second. Yep, okay, so you just noticed the architecture changed can file for ARM build root, and I actually can look at uh, load charts, and, and memory and so forth is coming across. Uh, memory allocations, applications running, processes, so forth. So this is pretty cool. Finally, you have, a, you have visibility into this beyond LEDs. Um, uh, I'm gonna show one more quick command, and then we'll call it good. There is a, this is an experimental tool. When I've been watching this log, I've actually been running a command called cell watch, which watches a multicast log. But one of the other things you wanna be able to do is discover devices on a network. And um, one of the reasons I didn't demo this first is it's somewhat unreliable on some Wi-Fi networks, including mine for some reason. So I've got some work to do there. But you'll notice I can go query the metadata from the device and I have the version number and its IP address. I can also, uh, refer to it by its board ID, which is this, this first number, EC314F. Every device will have a unique board ID. Uh, thank you. So it gives me information from my, my project, including uh, it, pretty much any, any metadata I want to put there, I can, I can return. And so there are libraries to basically query devices on a network and discover and, and return what's there. So that's pretty much it, I think I'm out of time. Uh, I don't think I had anything more particularly in the slide deck. If I could get the slide deck back up. Um, uh, yeah, okay, so there, there are some things we're working on right now. These are the kind of the major focuses of the NERVS team. Um, getting things better, getting things easier. It's been clear from the training that 
getting to the point I'm just at is not documented well enough, or nor is it something that a lot of people feel comfortable doing yet. And getting the cell tool a little more robust, especially in wireless uh, setups, is important. Uh, there's a bunch of security uh, work going on, and Justin demoed Nerves Reactor, which is a, um, a way of doing live code reloading for development. Um, and I want to give a big uh, thanks to uh, Frank Hunleth, who happens to be in the room, who started Nerves Project and is, uh, is responsible for all the, the really hard parts of it. Um, and Justin Schneck, who's been doing a lot to improve the tool chain and, and give speeches. And Greg Mefford, who's been involved. And there's, I'm not going to be able to thank everyone who's been involved, but there's a lot of people who are starting to contribute to this project, and it's really cool to see it go. And I'll thank you guys all. Um, this is what I demoed. And I guess if you want to get further resources, nurseproject.org is the best place to go because you can get everywhere else from there. And, and join us on Elixir Slack. So I'll be around later if there are questions. All right. <laughs>